The late Cretaceous was truly a time of monstrous carnivores. On the lands, giant theropods roamed unmatched, and the waters of prehistoric Earth didn't fare much better, as they were filled with giant mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. In these waters, animals had to be at the top of their game to survive, leading to some pretty amazing evolutionary traits, as seen in the undisputed king of turtles, the Archelon. Despite appearing remarkably similar to the modern-day leatherback sea turtle, it would be immediately clear that the Archelon was no ordinary turtle, as it was the largest turtle to ever exist, leading to its fitting name, which translates to Ruler Turtle, and being the biggest of its kind to ever swim, it was truly monstrous in size. The original specimen discovered measured an impressive 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters in length from head to tail, and through the years even larger Archelons have been discovered, with the biggest belonging to a specimen named Brigida, who tipped the scales at between 2.2 and 3 3.2 tons while measuring 4.6 meters or 15 feet in length, making it twice as long as the average leatherback sea turtle. And the Archelon was also immensely wide, with Brigida being 4 meters or 13 feet long from flipper to flipper. This large girth was in part a result of their giant shell, also known as a carapace, which unlike most turtles, was not hardened. Instead, the Archelon had ribs which formed the framework that was covered in leathery skin, which despite not being as impenetrable as most turtle shells would still have provided a level of protection, as the skin would have been durable and thick. The most likely reason for the lack of a hard shell was its size. Having a shell be completely solid at the size it was would have made the Archelon sink like a rock. Thus, it had very dense rib bones and a light covering in order to counter both sinking and excessive buoyancy, allowing it more control while swimming. The shell would have also sported a row of ridges that ran down the middle of its back. The wide carapace it possessed provided further benefit by giving the Archelon protection against some of the larger predators, like mosasaurs, as its girth would have made it difficult for carnivores to get their jaws around its body. This being said, it would still probably have been vulnerable to attacks, especially ones directed at its delicate flippers. Though, on any given day, there would have been easier and smaller prey for mosasaurs and other large marine predators to hunt. The Archelon's flippers, although fragile, were rather long. However, despite their length, it is actually believed that it wasn't the mightiest of swimmers. Analysis on their flipper structure indicated that it didn't have strong propulsion capabilities, leading many to believe that it solely lived in calmer and shallower waters, further supported by the fact that no remains have been found in areas that corresponded with deep waters. With this in mind, there has been some evidence that contradicts this theory, as its flipper to carapace ratio suggests that it was probably capable of short bursts of speed, allowing it to catch moving prey, and may be even offering the Archelon enough propulsion to travel in the open ocean if needed. While catching this common prey, the Archelon would have utilized its only weapon, its incredibly large mouth and beak. Archelons possessed massive heads, some reaching 3.3 feet or over 1 meter in length, so naturally they had very elongated beaks, which also held extremely hooked shapes. The beak would most likely have been covered by a sheath, and was sharp in the front while doling towards the back of the mouth and because of its hooked shape and the dull back areas. Two main theories on its beak and subsequent prey have been formed. The majority of paleontologists suspect that its beak and bite were perfectly designed for sharing, as hinted by its hooked structure. With its sharing bite, it would have snipped soft-bodied prey, essentially cutting them up into smaller portions that it could easily swallow. This share and swallow method is similar to what is seen in modern-day leatherback sea turtles. It is believed that with this bite, it would have primarily hunted soft jellyfish and cephalopods, such as squid, while occasionally tackling harder shelled prey and possibly even other marine reptiles as well as larger fish. The Cretaceous cephalopods and jellyfish are thought to have preferred water close to the surface, meaning that Archelon was most likely a surface dweller and would probably only find itself on rare occasions lurking near the sea floor. However, the other theory on its beak and bite actually depict it as a mainly sea floor dweller. Some paleontologists believe that its bite was more effective at crushing than sharing, and that its large head and jaw provided it quite the punch, leading to its main prey being hard-shelled crustaceans, which would have tended to stick to the sea floor. And there is some evidence that it may have indeed glided on the floor routinely, as it had a rather thick plastron, the underside of a turtle. This thickness indicates prolonged exposure with a muddy sea floor. However, it could have also developed a thick underside in order to protect itself from ambush attacks, as it did share its environment with sharks, along with 
these two theories, it's also thought that his beak would have been used to fight other Archelons, with a small number of paleontologists even thinking that the pointed end of its beak was solely used for fighting one another, and perhaps self-defense from predators. And as a resident of the late Cretaceous seas, there were plenty of predators. So far, the Archelon has only been found in the United States of America, with the vast majority of discoveries originating from the Pierce Shale Formation, located in South Dakota. This area corresponds with the ancient Western Interior Seaway, a rather large inland sea that ran through prehistoric North America, dividing it in two, creating two separate continents in the process, Laramidia to the west and Appalachia to the east. This sea held very shallow waters, with the average seafloor being no more than 180 meters or 600 feet beneath the surface. Most likely, the Archelon preferred the most shallow waters of the sea, giving it more access to prey and coastlines where it is thought to have ventured in order to lay its eggs. However, it would have had to watch out for terrestrial predators, and so did its young. The young would also be vulnerable to attacks from smaller aquatic carnivores like the seabird, Hesper Ornis, and the waters were not entirely safe for fully grown Archelons either, because as mentioned, the seas of the late Cretaceous were filled with many large marine predators, especially during the Archelon's heyday, which took place roughly 70 million years ago, and in the local area in which Archelon has been found, it's been noted that mosasaurs were particularly abundant, with the most common being the plate carpus, which could grow to 4.3 meters or 14 feet long. However, even larger mosasaurs, like the Tylosaurus, also lived here, which could grow much larger than both plate carpus and Archelon. Unfortunately, mosasaurs were not the only threat, as sharks also existed in plenty, exemplified by the crow shark, which grew longer than most Archelons did. It is thought that sharks were one of the main predators of Archelon during these times. Other inhabitants, which probably did not pose as much threat, included plesiosaurs like the Elasmosaurus and large predatory fish like Zephactinus. These waters were also filled with the Archelon's prey, like cephalopods, jellyfish, and squid. Despite the inherent dangers of the western interior seaway, the Archelon still managed to thrive for millions of years, reaping the benefits of being the largest turtle ever. Yet eventually, its time came to an end as well. However, no one is sure when or how it disappeared. Some believe that parts of the geological formation eroded, making it seem that Archelon died out much earlier than it really did, though more research is needed to come to a conclusion. And regarding its extinction, some speculate that as the western interior shrank, the Archelon's habitat suffered and prey diminished, while others theorize that increased predation on hatchlings played a role in its ultimate demise. This was truly a majestic creature that has thankfully gotten more attention recently thanks to its appearance in Prehistoric Planet, and hopefully it will only start to appear more and more often.